It's what's known as open sampling. Which is not to be confused with open coding, right? Open sampling. Open sampling um, is a broad sampling uh, to locate general concepts. The quote is, includes on-site sampling. You know, if, if you're conducting your research at a shelter, or a clinic, or a home, or a hospice, or wherever you're conducting your research, that on-site sort of general sampling. Broad sampling to locate general concepts. And um, open sampling is associated with open coding. It would make sense. Um, and I'll write that down, so associated Uh, open sampling is associated with open coding, and the whole point of it is to locate O C A, locate general concepts. So you can imagine that if I'm trying to identify a concept um, to strengthen my overall notion of some category, then what I'm going to do is I'm in, in, in arriving at a label for that category, right, and wanting to um, formally open code the category, it's going to be important that I have uh, a good understanding of the concepts that reinforce that category because we know, again, that concepts reinforce, a collection of concepts reinforce sort of this unit idea of category. Um, well, since it's associated with open coding, open sampling is associated with open coding, what I do is I, I sort of have like a general, I go in and I sort of just observe. Right? You can imagine, like, let's say I'm not an artist, but Let's say that's your eye, right? I'm observing um, the scope of something, right? So let's say this is the overall, and I'm just, you know, I'm observing or watching one particular aspect of this overall thing, right? And I'm just focusing in on one particular aspect of this, this much larger system, right? As I said, if this is the on-site location, I'm not observing the entire on-site location. I'm sort of generally focusing in on those aspects of the location that I think Will, will best suit my research. So I'm sort of scanning. Right? I'm looking at this part, I stop. I look at this part, okay, I stop. Looking around, I'm just watching, seeing generally what things are. Um, I use those, I use sort of this pervasive um, um, sort of scan, if you will, um, to help in forming general concepts. And obviously, these general concepts are going to help me form uh, the label that I'll apply to the category, which those concepts are subordinate to, um, so hence the open sampling serves to facilitate in my open coding, right? Hopefully that made sense, right? My open coding obviously being the general labeling of a category. That labeling of a category requires that I have an understanding of what the concepts are, and I'm really not going to understand what those concepts are until I, uh, I open sample, right? So open sampling is, uh, open sampling is important, All right? So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, number four um, is relational and variational sampling, right? Relational and variational sampling. Um, this is associated with axial coding, and it is, quote, and this is a quote, um, its aim is to maximize and find difference at the dimensional level. It's very, very important. I'm not going to write all that down because it's a lot to write, so just look at number four on page 11. Um, relational and variational sampling is associated with axial coding. We know the point of axial coding, right? Axial coding is uh, a more specified relational coding where I group categories. I'm looking at the associations, uh, the comparisons and con contrast between various categories. Obviously, I can't do axial coding until I've labeled my categories. Well, relational and variational sampling is associated with axial coding. Variational sampling is associated with uh, axial coding, and it says its aim is to maximize and find the differences at the dimensional level. What in the world does that mean? Remember in axial coding, we're going to have category, so this would be category, this is the category level. We're going to be looking at sort of the relationship between categories. It's not just the labeling of one individual category, but the, the relationship between categories and um, the, the broader structure of the relationship between all categories. Well, we recognize that categories are um, comprised of properties, 
right? And that properties are um, sort of defined by their spectrum, their gradation, and this is called dimension, uh, dimensional level. Dimensional. T I M E N S I O N. So we have categories, properties, dimension. We have categories, color, property is shade, dimension is sort of the gradation of shade from lighter to darker. What variational sampling does, quote, is the whole point is, it is its aim is to maximize and find the differences at the dimensional level. Right? So we want to see, for example, um, let's say we use violence as a property. And as a dimensional um, level of violence, we might say sort of the varying degrees, the gradation of forms of violence, so that you might have um, physical violence, you might have mental violence, you might have peer pressure, you might have, um, you might have threats. You can see that all of these are aspects of violence, but what they are is, is a gradation. Like peer pressure isn't as severe as a threat. A threat isn't severe as isn't, isn't as severe as mental violence, I guess, and mental violence, and this is just general, because, you know, this is all debatable. Mental violence isn't as severe as physical violence. Physical violence isn't as severe as murder, so that you can go from peer pressure to murder, that gradation um, in forms of violence uh, uh, um, uh, is a representation of sort of the subordinate um, spectrum, if you will, that reflects the property, right? That reflects the category, right? That reflects the theory, right? And this is this, and then obviously categories together, sort of all of these together, go to make sense of our theory, right? So that we have a theory at the top that we're trying to define, right? As a consequence of our grounded, grounded, groundedness, I guess. So we have a theory, um, which is a collection of sort of the nexus of categories. This nexus of categories is related by roughly a nexus of properties, these properties are connected by this spectrum of, of, of gradation, and I just gave you an example, and what variational sampling does is to strengthen that, the dimension. So if I'm, very, if I'm attempting to sort of enact variational sampling in the model that I just gave you, well, I would want to know, you know, at what point did the peer pressure turn into a threat? And, and at what point, I'm sampling the pop population, right? At what point did the mental violence change into physical violence, or did the mental violence change into physical violence? And I might not actually ask the question, I wouldn't ask the question that directly. I would ask a more general question and wait to see if I got that response from the participant. You know, and then I recognized that, you know, he all of a sudden, you know, stopped cursing at me and I started to, you know, we started to get into physical fights and that, that line is serving as an indication that there is, this is a dimensional relation, right? This, this shows me that there's been um, an increase in the, in the, what's the word I want? An increase in the, I don't know, I guess the effective nature of, of the concept being analyzed, and this would be violence, right? So um, this is sort of like the hierarchical structure of your grounded theory, right? Theories, um, categories are subordinate, properties are subordinate to categories, dimensions are subordinate to properties. All right, and lastly, Number five, um, discriminant sampling. All right, so discriminant sampling is number five, and this is associated with selective coding. Um, this is used to maximize relationships between categories. Um, pretty basic. I've done, uh, and I can draw this out. So we have a coding method here. And then we have our sampling method here. So when we're talking about open coding, when we're talking about open coding, we're talking about open open sampling. Right? Open sampling reinforces open coding. They're, they're, they work well together, right? Axial coding is reinforced by relational or variational sampling. And then lastly, uh, selective coding is reinforced by discriminant sampling. Uh, 
and it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, hopefully.